1993, I was asked by one of my clients called Yunos to defend him in a case involving a partnership dispute. We will call the plaintiff John and we will call the defendant my friend Yunos. John and Yunos were friends. Yunos had a business. At some point they worked together and afterwards John went away. Many years down the line, John sued Yunos, claiming to be a partner in the business. He wanted 50% of the profits and he wanted an account. By the time I was involved in it, the case had been filed 10 years earlier and a lot of interesting things happened in that case. Plaintiff's counsel, who is now a judge, wrote a letter saying that the court had set down a particular date for trial. So I went to court. My client had very little money to give me and I think eventually I got fees of 500 ringgit which translates to about US $120. I went to court and certain things happened after which Yunus wrote a beautiful letter to me in which he thought this was the politest cross-examination he had ever seen in his life. What he didn't know was I was quaking inside, I was shivering because the case was given to me at the last minute. And when I went on the day of the trial, for some reason the plaintiff and his counsel were not in court and the judge was in a bit of a mood and the judge said I'm going on at which point I asked for permission to have the matter stood down as they call it and I did try to call the other side couldn't get the other side because the clerk and the firm said that the lawyer had actually gone off to attend to another hearing and he could not respond to me and so I came back and I told this problem to the judge and the judge said the other plaintiffs they started this case you go on now. So we put in the witness, our witness, and we closed the case. At the end of it, it was done. He set a date down for decision and that was it. 24 hours later, I get a phone call. It's the plaintiff lawyer and he said, listen, there has been a scheduling error. I overlooked coming to court. I thought I was supposed to be in court A as opposed to your court. And I didn't come for that reason. Would you like to set aside the judgment that has been entered and by the time judgment had been entered against his client? And I said, okay, let's set it aside. So we went before the judge. The judge looked at me like I was mad and we set aside the judgment and then the plaintiff was allowed to put in his first witness who was John. And it was my turn to cross-examine John and I began to ask him questions about the partnership. When did the company begin? What was his primary business? How many square feet was the business? How much rentals were being paid? Who was the landlord? What were the outgoings? What was the tax exposure of the company? How did they deal with financings? What about loans, charges on any property that the company held? I was just asking questions simply out of thin air and this went on for about three hours and at about half past 12, the judge put up his hand and said, stop. So I stop. I'm wondering what the judge is going to do next and he turns and looks at the plaintiff's counsel who was one of the greatest gentlemen I've ever met. He's a judge now and says, I am not sure how many witnesses you have after this. Are there other witnesses? And this man who's counsel for the plaintiff very frankly says, he is the main witness, my lord. And I have one or two formal witnesses in relation to documents, but the heart of the case lies with him. And the judge looked at him and said, I am not convinced that in re-examination, you can reinstate the evidence that has been destroyed during cross. Would you like to think about it? And this gentleman said, yes. We came back before the court after lunch and the judge asked what happened. And counsel for the plaintiff said, I have spoken to my client and we have now decided to withdraw the case. And turned to me and said, could you please excuse my client from paying costs? I had already got no money out of my client, very little. But I looked at this person who was the plaintiff's counsel and I became very respectful of his courtesy and his professionalism. And I said, yeah, and we withdrew. And I remember Yunus took me down, in those days it was in Wisma, Denmark, to the canteen that was nearby. They were almost closing because it was after lunch and he bought me a cup of coffee and we had a pleasant conversation for half an hour 
Yunus is of course no more, but that was one of those instances in which, as my director has asked me, tell me an instance where a judge pulled you aside and said something to you. No judge ever pulled me aside, but this was an instance where in open court, the judge basically assessing the evidence made a decision. And the plaintiff's counsel was kind enough to bow before the storm. If he had persisted, I would have had to go on for four or five days at great cost to my client and to his client. And it would have ended, I am sure, in the same way. So that is what I remember of that case. I hope this story tells you that we still have very many good plaintiff's counsel in this country who are perfect gentlemen. We've just had an MCO and this is to keep you entertained. Thank you very much. Goodbye.